All right, we're going to be looking at a promontory peg deadfall trap. Okay, I'm doing this indoors, um, so I'm using just stuff that I have lying around. Typically, you'd use a large flat rock. In this case, I've got a binder here. Okay, I'm going to show this setup first, then we'll release it, and then I'll show you the individual pieces and how to actually set this up. I've got this light here to help kind of illuminate under this uh, binder because it's a little hard to see in the shadow. Okay, you should be able to see that fishing line. It's attached to the bottom half of the peg and it's very taut and it runs all the way to the back over here and there's it's just tied to a stick and there's a lot of tension on that line so that if anything were to get under there and either try to jump over it or under it it's gonna pull that peg apart now you can see it's actually kind of cockeyed and halfway apart already so along with that um, fishing line there it's basically giving it a hair trigger I mean, you can see right there that that thing is just about to pop off and the thing about these is you don't want them to fit perfect and snug and everything it's gonna fall on its own see so you gotta make sure that gravity doesn't finish the job because you might have it set up and it might stay up for a couple hours and then just fall on its own. So we'll kind of look at how we're setting it up here. It's a little difficult because this thing wants to slide around a bit. And this has a slick uh, kind of vinyl exterior which allows those pegs to slide apart. With a rock they would get a lot of traction on there and they wouldn't come apart as easily. So let's see if we can get this set up here. It's proving to be challenging. That's just so slick that it doesn't want to catch up there. We're going to move the camera. Here. Let's actually move it over here. Now this rock, you could use a little piece of bait, whether it's meat, fruit, or a nut. That's going to simulate, in this case, the bait. You can also put bait along your string there, under it, anywhere around there to get the animal to pass through that area, but you can also put it in here. Now that's accomplishing two things. It's going to tempt the animal to begin messing with the peg, which more than likely is going to set this off, because there's no way to get that thing out since it's pressed between the two pieces without pulling on it and breaking it apart. So that alone is going to do it. Um, but it's also spreading these pegs because it gives it more of a hair trigger when they're spread apart and angled rather than touching flush. So that's another reason why you would do that. And I would actually put bait along the wire, maybe even under some rocks so the animal has to root under there because it's not going to pay attention to that, that fishing line it's just going to focus on the food so if it presses up against it it won't care it doesn't perceive that as a threat won't even probably see it and it'll set it off that way but this is the key here is to put something in. you can even use a rock if you don't have bait that type of bait that'll fit in there just put a little rock and get that spread apart 
when this was first set up, you saw how far apart the pegs were and kind of off kilter. That's going to allow the slightest amount of vibration to set off the trap, which is what you want. You don't want to rely on the animal pulling really hard on that because it may not. A lot of the animals are very nimble and they'll just pick at the food gingerly because they, you know, they're not just going to come in and just swat it with their paw or whatever. Okay. So, I'm going to back off a little bit. In this case, we have our little peg animal. Comes in. It's going to peck at the fishing line, which isn't as taut as it should be. And then it's crushed. Okay, so. Let's look at the peg itself here. Alright. All it was was just a small stick. You can vary the length of it. This one's actually really short. It's probably only about, I don't know, six inches. So this is what it was like when it was attached, when it was one solid piece. All you do is you cut with the saw halfway into one side, flip it around halfway into the other, and it should be an equidistance apart pretty much. So you've got about two inches in the middle, about an inch and a half on each end or so. And then you can either split it just with your hands or you can take your knife and just kind of drive it in the middle and just kind of crack that open. And it'll usually split pretty flush. And then you just take your knife and scrape it. And I've kind of scraped this and sanded it and put some uh, wood finish on it just to help it last longer. That way I can carry this around in my kit. It's very small, it just fits in my hand. And that, that alone is enough to set up a trap. Okay, so we'll set this down. And basically, you're just kind of setting it up like this. You see that space in there? You can take your fishing line and just loop it around the top like that you could always do like a little square knot on there a slip knot in this case I just put a little loop and you can tie the anchor in to a stick to a rock really to anything and then just wedge that under the base of your deadfall weight now I would want this higher this loop higher on the peg so that it's got more leverage to pull it down. You can even put a notch up there, just tie it up to the top. Um, this piece would then fit on top there. And you want to kind of give them a little space there. It doesn't necessarily have to be completely vertical touching. It can be a little off like this if you wanted. It's just going to, the more unstable it is, the more of a hair trigger it's going to give it, which is what you want. Okay. And then, like I said, with that piece of bait, you can wedge it up in there. Now that animal has to claw in there. It's probably, it's more than likely just going to pull this piece down. It already sees it separating. It's just going to pull that down and separate it. Now the thing about bait, you're not putting the bait out there to get the animal to give the animal something to eat. You're just putting it out there to attract the animal. So it doesn't even have to be ex really easily accessible. It just has to to be there as either a visual or a scent attractant to uh, draw the animal in so that it'll get inside your trap and attempt to get at the bait. 
doesn't actually have to get the bait and eat it. You don't want it to get the bait and eat it because if you do that, then the animal is just going to go away once it's got the free meal. And you don't want to be supplying free meals in a survival situation. Now you also don't want this angle too much. Move this around here. Don't want to give it too much of an angle. It's just really difficult because it wants to slide on me here due to uh, this slick binder. So I've just stuck the bait in there. And again, you can put bait in the peg itself. You could technically tie, tape, rubber band bait around the fishing line or under the fishing line. Whatever you do, you don't want to put a lot of loose bait around. Maybe just little tiny morsels to kind of draw the animal into the center. But if you get loose bait, this little mouse is going to run up or chipmunk grab the bait and leave. So they have to work for the bait in order to set off the trap. So again, let's see if we can just work the fishing line. Pull it around here as so you can see. See it's splitting apart. So actually what I would do, look at that, that's actually still set like that. So you could pull that line taut again and then the next time the animal touches it, it's really going to go off. You might want to watch it for a few minutes to make sure it doesn't collapse on its own, but that's how you want it. Because it's just going to be a hair trigger, so... Boom. The animal gets caught. Now, I've seen some people using kind of a V-shaped line towards the back ends of the the deadfall weight instead of just one line there's two problem I see with that is you want your your trigger to be in the very middle of the deadfall if the animal just starts to come in or it's going out and triggers that one of those lines on the side or the edges it may only be partially trapped and it can pull itself out of the trap if you've got one single line in the middle of the trap, it guarantees that when that's triggered, the animal's going to be right in the middle. So even if it tries to jump out a little, it's still going to get most of its body caught under the weight of the trap. So that's pretty much going to be it for our promontory deadfall. Um, actually, one more thing about it. You'll see some of these where one of these pegs will be sharpened to a point and then they'll actually skewer the bait onto the pointed part. Technically you can do that. I mean I could take a rubber band, say this is the bait. I can just as easily rubber band the bait. Okay. Now if you skewer it, the animal can just eat that off there like a uh, shish kebab, you know. If there's a rubber band and it's tied to it, it's really got to work and pull and chew past the band to get to that piece of bait. So the idea of just sticking, you know, a little baby tomato on the top there, a piece of apple, you're going to lose your bait that way and you may not, you know, it may not trigger the trap. So keep a rubber band, you know, you can, in your pack, you can just Put your rubber band around your peg to keep it together. 
so you don't lose it and then you also have the band to attach your bait. That's literally all you need for your trap and just find a uh, rock in the wild. Um, you can also make the stick when you're out in the field as well. So that's pretty much all you need. So that's going to be it for the Promontory Peg Deadfall Trap. I will have some other primitive trap videos here shortly. So be sure to check those out and subscribe to my channel if you're into that sort of thing. Thanks for watching.